This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. As we know from the previous video in this chapter on controlling transparency, 3ds Max uses the word opacity as its means to measure and define both the solid areas on a material surface and the areas that appear transparent. An object's opacity level can also be controlled by way of a map. Having the design in the map determine just exactly what areas on a surface appear both see-through and solid. This video will show you how that's done. I'm going to be using a file named Material Map Branches that can be found in the Working Files folder for this chapter. Now, if you've previously watched the video in this title on bump maps, you're aware that 3ds Max interprets a map loaded onto the bump branch of a material tree a little bit different than it interprets the same map when loaded onto the diffuse branch. You'll remember how the bump slot pulls the grayscale intensities out of a map to derive its texturing effect. It doesn't recognize color, it sees only black, white, and shades of gray. Well, a map loaded onto the opacity branch is looked at pretty much the same way. Any color element within the map is removed. The map, being seen only for its black, white, and gray areas, then determines by its pattern what specific areas on the surface are transparent, what areas are semi transparent, and what areas are seen as completely opaque. The way it works is any white areas in a map, when laid on top of a surface, will keep those specific areas remaining opaque, or in other words, looking solid. The black areas in an opacity map will instead turn the surface on which it lays transparent or looking as if it's see-through. Now, the effect is all an illusion. The object the opacity map is applied to is still very much solid and in one piece. The magic of the branch just gives the skin the look of being transparent in certain areas. Let's see how this would work in our scene. Let's open the material editor and apply a gray sample ball to the object in the scene. Let's now change that color by opening up the diffuse color swatch. We'll make it a light green, adding all the green, then pulling out a little of the saturation. OK, once we've done that, we'll activate the active shade in our perspective viewport. We can do that by accessing the menu up at the name perspective. From there, we'll choose extended viewports, then active shade. OK, there's two different ways that you can get up on the opacity branch of our material. The first would be to click on the Map Shortcut button directly to the right of the name Opacity. The other option would take you down to the Map section. I'm going to do that. I'll locate the Opacity branch, then click on the None button loading a bitmap. Working in Chapter 11 of the Working Files folder, I'll find Blue Squares. When the map is located, I'll simply double-click on its name. Now, in the Material Editor, on the Opacity branch down in the lower right corner, I'll click on View Image. At the top of the viewing window, I'll activate Monochrome. This gives me a better look at the grayscale intensities in the picture. Now, the blue color is being interpreted as light gray. That light gray color used in the Opacity branch will create an area that's semi-transparent. You can see that in our rendered viewport. Now let's see how the opacity levels would differ if instead using a straight black and white map. Back in the Bitmap Parameters category, I'll click on the long button that ends with the word Blue Squares. This time, we'll choose the bitmap image named Black Squares. The squares, being now black instead of blue, will give us a more solid level of transparency. Let's load that in and see how it looks. There you go, the surface area covered by the white squares remains solid, while the area of the object covered by the black squares is transparent. You can also reverse that effect, taking the white areas to black and the black areas to white. To do that, you'll right-click in the Material Editor, then from the menu choose Output. This simply drops you down a little farther in the Material Editor controls. In the Output category, on the top far left, we'll activate Invert. This, in essence, reverses the effect. Let's turn that back off. I wonder how things would look if what the Opacity channel saw was black and a shade of gray, so some areas would be completely transparent while other areas just partially transparent.
Let's try that. Back under the bitmap parameters, we'll click on the button that ends with the name Black Squares. This time around, we'll choose the map named Black and Blue Squares. Activating the monochrome option in the viewing window, we get a better idea of just exactly how the map will be interpreted as it lays on the surface. The black area is completely transparent, while the gray areas will be partially transparent. Let's go ahead and load that in. And that's exactly the effect that we're getting. Now, even though we didn't need it for our material here, anytime you're creating a transparent surface, make sure to remember the two sided button if the back side of the object isn't rendering correctly. To find that, we'll have to go back above our color swatches. That means jumping off the branch by hitting Go to Parent. About two inches above the ambient swatch and to the right, you'll see two sided. For this example, it actually looks better if we leave it off. Just remember the option if you need it during a project. Let's go back and make a quick color change. We'll open up the diffuse color swatch, changing it to orange. By the way, to the right side of the three swatches, do you see the letter M next to the primary opacity control? That letter simply tells us that we have a map loaded onto the opacity branch. With the map loaded on the branch, the value setting that you see to the left has been pretty much disabled. You can see that by changing its values. Let's type in 50. No change in the scene, let's try 0. Again, with the map loaded, no visual difference. Controlling the overall level of transparency has now switched down to the material branches. Here, let's change the opacity to 66. Now you can see the change that that's made. Let's try 33. And we'll take the number back to 100. Let's add a little shine to the surface so I can show you one more thing. We'll head up to the specular highlights and change the specular level to 70. The glossiness we can keep at 10. Now, the surface quite honestly doesn't look very realistic. The specular highlight is creeping right into the area that is supposed to be transparent, pretty much spoiling the effect. Watch how we can fix that. Back down in the maps, we'll locate the opacity map. We'll then drag that map straight up to the None button to the right of Specular Level. When the option box opens, we'll choose Instance. That way if we change one reference to the map, the other one will change also. Take a look at what that's done. Let's also intensify the color of our orange, adding some saturation. The specular highlights are now being masked out of the areas that are supposed to be transparent. Let's now do this. We'll jump up on the opacity map. On the right, in the coordinates category, we'll change the W angle to 90. Once we've done that, we'll also change the tiling to 3 and 3. Okay, let's take the W angle back to 0. We can do that by simply right clicking on that spinner. Let's now go back to our parent and change the color swatch to the main body color to blue. OK, back down to the maps, we'll turn off the opacity. Now, the object being 100% transparent, we're just picking up the shine map. Remember, the main opacity setting was left at zero. Let's crank that back up. With the opacity map being turned off, notice that M to the right of opacity is now small case. That's Max's way of telling you that a map's been loaded, but it's no longer being used. Compare that to the capital M to the right of specular level. OK, let's drop back down on the maps, turning the opacity back on. That's pretty neat. Now, to prove that we're actually being able to look through the object, let's change the color of our rendered background. We can do that by opening up the environment controls in the rendering pulldown. You could also open the options by simply typing 8 on your keyboard. In the dialog box in the upper left hand corner, you'll see a black color swatch under background. Let's open that up, changing the color to bright yellow. To get there, we'll maximize both the red and green, leaving the blue where it is. Now, this is the way the surface looks using the black and blue squares map. Let's change that instead to the black and white. I'll jump back up on the opacity branch, then down into the bitmap parameter section, I'll click on the map that reads black and blue squares. 
Back in my browsing window, I'll choose black squares. Take a look at the difference that's made. Now we have completely opaque and completely transparent areas on our surface. Notice that because we instanced the opacity map to the specular level, changing one changed both. So that ought to give you a few ideas regarding using opacity maps. Not always something you're going to use, but definitely a quick and easy way of adding a level of transparency to something when a project calls for it. I'll go ahead and save this out as Material Map Branch Opacity Completed if you'd like to take a look.